Welcome, this is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 7, Torque and Rotation, and the section here is 7.K, rotating, rotating, Sliding, and Both. Here's the scenario which you can read to yourself of what is occurring. Part A. It asks you to label all the forces. All right, go ahead. There should be around three. We know that there is the force going down, which is gonna be force gravity. Opposite of that is going to be force normal. And then force friction is going in the opposite direction. Correct? Wrong. Okay, let me draw this for you and label the velocity, okay? If you look at the way the velocity vector looks like, it is tangent, so, and this will go, it's going, it's going clockwise, right? So, here's the angular velocity, right? Which is the velocity, and that is what it's turning, right? You see, at this point, velocity is pointing this way. Okay, velocity is pointing this way, so force of friction has to be opposite to it. So, force of friction to the right. Now, number two, force of friction has to be opposite to the velocity. In terms of force that you drew above, explain why the center of mass of the wheel increases its speed and rotational speed of the wheel during this time from T to big T. What is big T to big, little t to big T? It says it right here. The wheel spins within initial angular velocity omega naught, so that's all points on the edge of the wheel circle and the wheel centers with speed V naught at time t equals to zero, the wheel is released from rest, lands on the table, and does not bounce. Okay, so it hits the floor. The wheel rotates, speed decreases while the linear speed of the center of mass increases until the wheel begins to, ro to roll without slipping. So it falls down, it spins, falls down, then it basically starts moving forward, okay? All right, pause the video, try to do it. I said here that the center mass of the wheel increases its in translational speed because the force of friction is pointing in the same direction, so it's supplying it with more energy. The force of friction increases the acceleration towards the translational right. So the A is going to increase. That is the reason why the center of mass of the wheel increases its speed because, again, the force of friction increases the acceleration towards the translational right. Okay, translational speed is just the speed going in a line. And again, it's the sum of the forces going to the right. Part B, you're going, uh, she derived this equation. Without deriving this equation, um, you're going to determine if this is correct or not correct. Okay, um, mu omega naught r divided by 2g. Okay, you could take a look at the equation here. All right, because some students just wanted more information, so I wrote this part, okay? So you have the acceleration that is going to be increased by the force of friction towards the right. Read this part. The, rota the rotational speed of the wheel decreases due to the force of friction, okay? So the rotating speed is clockwise where the frictional force is counterclockwise, Okay, the frictional force of the torque causes the rotational speed to actually slow down. That is the reason why the wheel decreases during this time. Okay, so this explains the increase in translational speed, and this should explain why the rotational speed decreases. Okay, so let me draw this so this explains why wheel speed, so rotational wheel speed decreases this explains it this here explains why wheel increase speed 
and this is referring to translational okay this is in a line this is rotating all right okay so let me go back here all right so I would say the equation here describes the period that's what t of a rotating object it is defined by uh, the equation has the coefficient of friction in the numerator which is on top that suggests that if the coefficient of friction increases so if this goes increase then the right hand side will go up therefore this hand the right hand side has to go up because again this is in the numerator of the fraction this means that if the acceleration would be bigger increase on the right hand side of the equation then the period with on the left hand side would increase yes this means that the acceleration would be bigger the time to cover the distance would be smaller so if mu goes up t has to go up if t goes up I said for a distance here, there is going to say the time to cover the same distance would be smaller. So this distance D is going to be require less time. This is assuming if mu increases. Okay, this wouldn't make sense because the force of friction should slow things down, right? So this is wrong. In theory, what's supposed to happen is that for distance D, if mu increases, right? Let's say we here, right? Let's say if you run on grass, okay? If you run on grass, let's say if you run on grass, all right? You cover this distance in let's say uh, two minutes. All right, you're going to cover, uh, let's say, 50 yards, 50 meters, okay, in, let's say, five minutes. This is grass. But what happens if we increase this? Let's say you go to the sand now. So this becomes mu of the sand. 50 meters, running 50 meters in the sand is going to take you a long time because again it's things are being dragged down by the sand so here it's going to take let's say uh 10 minutes do you see it takes more time so in reality this shouldn't be on top they're supposed to have an inverse relationship the mu is supposed to be on the bottom exactly like what i said here the coefficient of friction should be in the denominator because if mu goes up, if mu goes up, if mu goes up, then the period, okay, should have the opposite effect. It should go down. Vice versa. If you now go into a, like, um, let's say a very soft surface, almost frictionless, almost, okay, and mu goes down. The period is going to be what? The period is going to go extremely goes up. All right. Next. You could read the scenario, but here it says the difference between surface finds that regards of the value of the radius or the coefficient of friction, the final motion of the wheel is to roll without slipping with a linear speed of one half V naught. Angular speed is one half. On the grid below, you're going to label it. Okay. The table here, um, part one shows the, um, has a low coefficient of friction. So let's see how it affects the velocity all right so again it's still what one half all right so in the end it's going to be like this you see it's one half so it's going to be going to look something uh let's use a line here like that okay and 
Okay, so this is gonna be the low part. It's gonna be in red. All right. So it only reaches the one half V naught, and again, it is linearly before it picks up that speed. What about if it has a high coefficient, um, coefficient of friction? All right. In the end, it's still going to be one half, but here it's going to take a least amount of time. Okay. This is going to be for the high coefficient of friction. Okay. This is going to require less time. And when it's low, it's going to require more time to go up to the one half V naught. All right. What about the angular velocity? Now we know that it all ends at here. You see how it picks up? Because again, it says here it picks up translational velocity. But here it's rotating. So here, remember, it's decreasing. Okay. We said it right here. It's going to be decreasing. So here it's going to come down. It's all going to come down from the one. So in the end, for let's do the red part first. It's going to end up at, let's say, one half. Same thing. And it's going to decrease from one. Likewise, uh, the low is also going to be going to be finished here. But it's going to just what? Require less time. All right. There you go. This is the high and this is the low. All right. If you need better explanation on this, read this part. It should explain why it decreases and increases and how it affects it. Here's just how the graph is. And remember, it says it right here. This is the final speed. It's one half V naught and the angular velocity is one half omega naught. All right, there you go. Increases up to that point, decreases up to this point. All right, how the coefficient of, of friction affects it. If it has low, it's going to require more time. If it's high coefficient of friction, it's going to require less time. All right, but there you go. Those are all your solutions.